and never allowed this industry to change me. And there were times, y'all, I'm going to keep it real with you, that I didn't feel seen. I remember when we first came in and we were doing rehearsal and they put us all in the same space. Like we didn't have our own dressing rooms at the time. I just so don't, I don't even know, know what no, beef. I don't even know. Between. You know what? It's so disturbing to me. Why is my name even in this conflict? Looks like Oprah has got some serious heat coming her way. And it's not fizzling out anytime soon. It's like each new revelation about her is adding more fuel to the fire, making the whole situation even messier. And now, there's talk that Fantasia might be adding more fuel to the fire. Remember her? She was right in the thick of Opar the Color Purple drama, where actors were allegedly getting getting the short end of the stick with low pay and tough working conditions. Fantasia knows firsthand what it's like to be on the receiving end of Oprah's supposed wrath. Now, word on the street is that she's gearing up to spill the beans and spill them good. But wait, there's more. Rumors are swirling that Fantasia isn't stopping at her own story. Nope, she's apparently ready to shine a light on other actors who faced similar treatment from Oprah. These folks, according to the grapevine, were supposedly blacklisted by Oprah for refusing to be pushed around. It's a sticky situation for Oprah, no doubt. But hey, even the mightiest can't dodge consequences forever, right? So who exactly are these actors allegedly blackballed by Oprah? Let's get into it. Now, Fantasia unleashed a storm on Opar, spilling the tea on how she allegedly had them living on the edge during filming. Even Fantasia, who usually keeps clear of drama, jumped into the mix. And that says something. It seems like Oprah really put them through the ringer. The accusations are flying fast and furious, from getting lowballed on pay to being left practically starving on set. Can you believe it? And here's the kicker. They're dishing that Oprah made them trek to set for crazy long hours every day without any security, and they had to squeeze into the same trailer. Hold up though, wasn't the budget for the color purple like a whopping $100 million? Where did all that cash vanish to? So, let's break it down. How in the world did Oprah sign up to produce a project where these talented black actresses were allegedly treated like second-class citizens? It's a head-scratcher for sure. Now Fantasia, who rocked Celie's character in The Color Purple, isn't one to stay quiet about her feelings. She straight up said, I have never allowed this industry to change me. And check this, she spilled that there were times when she felt invisible and unliked, but she's dropping wisdom her grandma used to dish out. What's the profit of a person gaining the whole world but losing their soul? Stay focused, baby. Before we dive into the nitty gritty, let's set the stage. Fantasia isn't flying solo on this one. Nope, she supposedly got the heavyweight Denzel Washington in her corner, along with a posse of other big name celebs. And let me tell you, they're not just sitting back and twiddling their thumbs. They're speaking out loud and clear, calling out Oprah and rallying against the unfair treatment of hardworking black artists. Denzel, with that shiny Oscar on his shelf, has always been a staunch supporter of black talent in the industry. Have you ever listened to him talk about racism? The man's passion is palpable. He sees through the confusion and misguided notions, standing tall for what's right. Then there's Oprah, flaunting her wealth like it's some kind of benevolent act. But when you look at Denzel, you see true dedication. I mean, just look at his work with Save Africa's children. The guy's commitment speaks volumes. He's not afraid to call out the shady stuff in Hollywood, even if it means taking on big shots like Oprah. And there are even whispers that Oprah might have tried to mess with Denzel too. Can you believe it? But hey, she can try all she wants, because when it comes to Denzel, she's messing with the wrong guy. All right, now let's dig into some other actors who've supposedly tangled with Opier. First up is Taraji Henson. She didn't hold back, spilling the tea about unfair pay and almost walking away from the project, the color purple. According to her, it was a real battle for several things, from getting a safe ride with a driver instead of a rental car in Atlanta to just having some grub at rehearsals. But wait, there's a twist. The rumors are swirling that Oprah may have gone off on Taraji and blamed her for causing the color purple to flop miserably at the box office. In case you didn't know, the film barely made half of its $140 million budget despite releasing more than two months ago with a lot of promo. So, according to the latest reports, the film already went digital due to its horrible performance at the box office 
and all the producers are now supposedly blaming Taraji and all that, she said at the promotional tour, causing the movie to fail. Now, when Taraji initially started speaking out and calling out the BS Oprah and the producers of the movie put her through, Oprah tried to do some damage control, but none of that really worked out. Because according to sources, some Hollywood executives and Oprah are already planning to blackball Taraji for making them lose so much money as a result of the bad publicity that she gave the movie with all of her rants about pay inequality. Now, let's break down the latest drama on the color purple front. The remake is in the hands of heavy hitters like Oprah Harpo Films, Steven Spielberg's Amblin Entertainment, SGS Pictures, and Quincy Jonas Productions, the same powerhouses that brought us the 1985 adaptation with Oprah herself rocking the role of Sophia. Fast forward to the new rendition, where Danielle Brooks takes on Sophia, Fantasia steps into the shoes of protagonist Sally Harris, and Taraji owns the stage as Sue Avery. Now, here's the kicker. You'd assume that with Taraji, a seasoned pro with more than two decades in the game and a trophy case full of awards, fair pay wouldn't be a battle, especially in a flick like The Color Purple, where Oprah is wearing the producer hat. But, surprise, surprise, Taraji spilled the tea that Oprah didn't exactly go to bat for her or the other leading ladies when it came to the paycheck. According to Taraji, the initial offer was downright disrespectful, and the big shots refused to budge until she laid down the ultimatum of walking away from the whole project. Can you believe it? Taraji, a force to be reckoned with, had to throw down to get what she deserved. And get this, Taraji is over it. She's had enough of the constant hustle for what's rightfully hers. In a recent Heart to Heart with Oprah BFF, Gail King, Taraji spilled the beans and hinted that she might just throw in the acting towel for good. Why? Because she's straight up tired of the never-ending battle for fair pay. So, Gail tried to keep it light, but Taraji wasn't playing around. The conversation got real when Taraji opened up about the ongoing struggle for fair pay that black actress, even veterans like herself, still face in the industry. And let me tell you, Gail was squirming a bit because, well, Taraji was there to promote the color purple, and this wasn't exactly the feel-good chat they probably had in mind. Gail, doing her best to navigate through the discomfort, kept nodding and repeating that she gets what Taraji is laying down. But Taraji was having none of it. She dropped the bomb that she's seriously considering hitting the brakes on acting altogether. Why? Because she's tired. Tired of busting her butt, being all gracious in her craft, and still getting paid peanuts. Taraji spilled, the math ain't mathing. Every time she smashes through a glass ceiling, it's like she never did it when the paycheck talks come around again. And here's where it got emotional. Taraji broke it down, saying she wants to fight for the up-and-coming actresses, be a voice for the next generation, but she's stuck in a loop of not getting what she deserves herself. It's a frustrating cycle, and you can hear the exhaustion in her voice as she explained, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. She's not just fighting for herself, she's trying to pave the way for those coming up behind her. Taraji also threw some serious shade at Oprah for making the cast roll up to set in rented cars day in and day out. Here's the scoop. These actors are pulling insane hours like we're talking 12 to 15 hours a day. So by the time they wrap up, they're practically zombies and now they gotta hit the road in that state. It's a recipe for disaster and raises the odds of accidents big time. And get this, no security, driving in the dead of night, risking getting jacked. Plus, those rental cars aren't even theirs. So any dings or scratches, and guess who's coughing up the cash? Yep, the actors. In a New York Times interview, Taraji spilled even more tea about how they were treated on the color purple set. She straight up said the producers wanted everyone to show up to work in rental cars until she put her foot down. Taraji was like, hold up, I can't be driving myself to set in Atlanta. This is an insurance liability. It's dangerous. She didn't stop there. She demanded a driver or security, and not just for herself. She told them, if you're doing it for me, you gotta do it for everybody. So, Danielle Brooks, Oprah, and Taraji all sat down for an interview, aiming to hype up the movie, but then Danielle just dropped a bomb of truth. Turns out in the first few weeks of rehearsals, none of the ladies had their own trailers. Nope, they had to share one single trailer for everything. Picture this, zero privacy, just all crammed into one space. Talk about a serious lack of respect. But wait, there's more. During those grueling 12 to 15 hour shifts, they weren't even getting fed or hydrated. Allegedly, they had to bring their own food from home just to survive the day. Now that's shady business right there. When Danielle spilled all this tea, Oprah looked visibly bothered, annoyed even. She quickly went on the defense, claiming she had no clue what was going on. But as soon as she got wind of it, supposedly it was like, oh my bad, gotta fix this. It's almost like she was trying to cover her tracks, 
acting like she didn't know until someone blew the whistle. Now, Danielle gave Oprah some credit, saying she helped them out immediately after hearing about their struggles. But folks weren't having it because, let's be real, they shouldn't have had to speak up in the first place. Basic needs should have been sorted out before it became a thing to gripe about. The whole situation's a disaster, and it's mind-blowing that it took the entire cast raising hell multiple times just to get something done. Also, Taraji called out the industry's double standard, where they shower you with praise for one project but act like they're broke when it's time for you to cash in. It's a raw and real moment, and it's clear that Taraji is just fed up with the whole game. Even before this recent interview bombshell, fans were picking up on the fact that Taraji didn't seem all that thrilled while promoting the color purple. You could practically feel the tension in the air, especially when it came to her interactions with Oprah. Something was definitely off, and fans were quick to pick up on the not-so-happy vibes Taraji was giving off. But wait, there's more. On December 19th, Taraji sat down for a deep dive during an hour-long SAG After Foundation Conversations interview. In the midst of discussing her various roles, she dropped another bomb about her experience with the 2008 blockbuster The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Now, get this, Taraji spilled the tea that she had to throw down and fight for a cool $500,000. And mind you, this is the very movie that snagged her an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress. In her own words, Taraji spilled, so that's why that Benjamin Button story hit so hard because all I was asking was for $500,000. She wasn't trying to take anything away from the A-listers like Brad Pitt, Kate Winslet, or Kate Blanchett. Taraji knows they earned their keep and worked hard for it, but dang, you'd think after an Oscar nod, she wouldn't have to pull teeth just to get a fair slice of the pie. Let's rewind a bit to the Monique and Oprah showdown because folks can't help but draw parallels with what Taraji's going through now. This drama started way back in 2009 when Monique starred in Precious, a movie produced by Opoir and Tyler Perry and directed by Lee Daniels. The real beef kicked off when Opoir and Tyler decided Monique should hit the press circuit for the film without any paycheck. Monique wasn't having it and straight up said, nah, not in my contract. According to Monique, she only got a measly 50k for the whole movie, which was barely enough. Now they wanted her to jet around the world promoting the film for free, not on Monique's watch. But Oprah and Tyler didn't take her refusal well at all. Instead, they started trashing her reputation in the industry, spinning a narrative about her being difficult to work with. Monique spilled the tea, saying Tyler Perry told her, you may want to consider promoting this film because if you get nominated for an Oscar, your next film is three to five million dollars, and if you win it, your next film is six to eight million dollars. Monique was like, hold up, I'm a black woman. Where are they paying those salaries, brother? She straight up told Tyler, I can't work for free. I've done what I was supposed to do. I can't go overseas and do this for free. Their back and forth continued, with Tyler saying he doesn't believe in giving money away for free, and Monique firing back, I don't believe in working for free. So we on the same page? It's a classic case of clash in values, and Monique wasn't backing down. He goes on about his spill, you know. I said, well, listen, you can write me the check for me to go overseas. I don't care where the money comes from, but I'm not gonna do it for free. He says, well, I don't believe in giving money away for free. I said, I don't believe in working for free, so we on the same page. She also claimed Tyler Perry allegedly went the extra mile to mess with her acting gigs. According to Monique, it all went down after she turned down a request to fly to France for the Cannes Film Festival, tied to promoting the movie Precious. So, check it. The movie studio initially asked her to jet off to France, but Monique, with her busy schedule as a talk show host, comedian, and family woman, respectfully declined. They tried to sweeten the deal by offering to upgrade her hotel room, but she and her husband stuck to their guns saying, nah, we're gonna spend this time with our family. When the third call came and they asked, what's it gonna take to get Monique to France? Her husband straight up asked, is there a number associated with it? That's when they dropped the bomb that they would never pay for anyone to do promotions for a movie. Monique revealed she was paid a mere $50,000 for Precious, and it wasn't about the money. She signed up to do it with her friend. The interviewer dug in, suggesting she needed the money to feed her family and pay bills, and Monique responded, I think that's what America says. We all say, I can't do it for free. She explained that when the movie studio refused to pay for her can appearance, they didn't make a fuss. But then the report started flying, painting Monique as demanding and difficult. The whole thing boiled down to a simple request that they understood couldn't be met. But suddenly, Monica found herself lobelied, and that's where the drama kicked in. Because what people didn't know was, 
I was paid $50,000 to do the movie Precious. And it really wasn't about the money, and I'm not complaining, because I signed up to do it with my friend. So when the movie studio says we can't set a precedence and pay you to do this, we didn't have an issue with them. Okay. But that's when the reports came that now Monique is being demanding and she's being difficult. Also, we can't forget about Dave Chappelle in this Opar saga. Dave rolled up on her show to spill the beans on why he turned down a whopping $50 million offer from Comedy Central and dipped to Africa. He was trying to explain that big money deals isn't all sunshine and rainbows. They come with some serious strings attached. But Oprah wasn't letting Dave off the hook that easy. She kept pressing him, trying to make him admit he went off the deep end. Dave was like, yo, enough is enough. Opor hit him with questions like, colleagues reported you became increasingly paranoid. Would you say you were paranoid? And Dave, being the legend he is, responded with, sure, what's a black man without his paranoia? You win $100 and you're still looking over your shoulder on the subway. Oprah, not letting up, asked if Dave went to a psychiatric hospital in South Africa. Dave, with his signature wit, was like, who? Oprah, persistent as ever, kept pushing. And Dave laid it out. People around him were pushing for him to take antipsychotic meds. But Oprah brushed it off like it was no big deal, repeating that Dave was just stressed and paranoid. Dave wasn't having it though. He spilled more tea, talking about how folks were trying to get him on meds, and he wasn't having any of that control game. He straight up said, I'm not taking this medicine, man, because I know these people be trying to control you or maybe discredit you. I was afraid. Opier, sticking to her narrative, insisted he was just stressed. Dave kept it real, saying, no question, but it's very stressful for someone to constantly walk behind you and say you're insane. Music, and even if you don't agree, with certain songs I may say this, you don't agree with certain songs, don't say you just don't agree with all of my right. views. Colleagues were quoted as saying that you had become uh, increasingly paranoid. Would you say you were paranoid? Sure. First of all, what is a black man without his paranoia in pain? So did you go to a psychiatric hospital? In South Africa? Yeah. Who? Huh? But you were stressed out. That's There's why- There's no question, question. but it's very stressful for someone to constantly walk behind you and say, you're insane. The whole thing was like a chess match, and Dave wasn't playing Oprah game. The man had his reasons for bouncing, and he wasn't letting anyone mess with his head. Now, some people are saying that the reason Opar was trying to paint Dave as crazy was because she could be part of those people who worked behind the scenes against him. The thing is, when he turned down that boatload of cash and walked away from Chappelle's show, it wasn't just about his career. It was a statement about the messed up dynamics of the industry, especially when it comes to humor, race, and how you're perceived. Back in 2004, Dave Chappelle was doing a stand-up gig in Sacramento, and things got real. You know that whole I'm Rick James be catchphrase from his show? Well, the audience kept yelling it out, and it kinda got under his skin. He even took a break from the stage to vent about how the show was messing with his life. Turns out he wasn't feeling the crazy work hours and how the show's success was taking over his whole vibe, especially since he wanted to focus more on his stand-up gigs. Chappelle didn't hold back either. He straight up said the network suits didn't get why people liked his show, calling them out for thinking the audience was dumb. But then, he had a real moment of honesty, admitting he misjudged things by saying, you people are stupid. He said, you know why my show is good? Because the network officials say you're not smart enough to get what I'm doing, and every day I fight for you. I tell them how smart you are. Turns out, I was wrong. You people are stupid. And then, just when everyone was gearing up for season 3 to drop in 2005, Chapoli threw everyone for a loop by bouncing during production and jetting off to South Africa. In interviews later on, he opened up about feeling unsatisfied with where the show was heading and needing some serious downtime to figure things out while dealing with a ton of stress. He said, Coming here, I don't have the distractions of fame. It quiets the ego down. I'm interested in the kind of person I've got to become. I want to be well-rounded, and the industry is a place of extremes. I want to be well-balanced. I've got to check my intentions, man. So after Dave Chappelle bounced from his show, people started gossiping like crazy, speculating all kinds of reasons for his exit. Some tabloids were throwing around ideas about drugs or mental health issues, which totally went against what Chappelle himself had been saying about why he left. 
But here's the deal. By walking away from the show, Chappelle had to kiss goodbye to a massive $50 million contract with Comedy Central. And then there's 50 Cent. He's been calling out Opar for a hot minute, accusing her of shady moves, especially when it comes to black actors. He straight up accused her of throwing black actors under the bus while protecting the predators with a lighter skin tone. The dude doesn't hit the pause button on this feud, for real. Back in the day when 50 Cent was hitting the big time with his music, he had dreams of making an appearance on Oprah show. This wasn't just about boosting his image from a Queen's ex-drug dealer to a successful rapper. It was also about making his grandma super proud, who happened to be a big Oprah fan. But when he pitched the idea to Oprah, she shut him down cold, making it clear she wasn't interested in anything 50 Cent had going on. Ouch. 50 took this rejection to heart and accused Oprah of being against black music, especially the kind he was making. He even took his trolling game up a notch by naming his dog after Opar and his cat after Opar ride or die, Gail King. Now, let's talk about this Oreo comment. 50 Cent threw some serious shade Opar way, calling her an Oreo, black on the outside but supposedly aligned with the white perspective on the inside. This all started when Opar came at 50 for his raw lyrics, claiming he and others were pushing negativity onto the culture, but 50 wasn't having it. He hit back, shining a light on what he perceives as Opar's split stance. According to him, she started with black women's views, but shifted gears to cater to middle-aged white American women for so long that she's basically become one herself. But 50 Cent isn't the only one who's been onto Oprah vibe for a minute. Ludacris had his own run-in with her way back in 2005. So Luda and the crew from Crash hit up Oprah's show to promote the movie, right? Sounds cool, but nah, Oprah had some other plans. Instead of giving Ludacris a chance to talk about his role, she straight up put him on blast for using the N-word word in his music. Luda wasn't having it though. In an interview, he spilled the beans saying, I was there for Crash, the movie. And basically, she said something about not agreeing with my music, but she thought I did great in the movie. Basically, she said something about not agreeing with my music, but she thought I did great in the movie. And of course, I was up there with the whole cast of Crash. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't necessarily feel like that needed to be said. And even if you don't agree, with certain songs I may say this, you don't agree with certain songs, don't say you just don't agree with all of my right. views. Right. Now, here's where it gets messed up. Luda, being the smart dude he is, fired back with some real talk. But Oprah wasn't having any of it. She cut out Ludacris's comeback, making it look like he just took the hit without saying a word. Luda spilled the tea, saying, she was able to say what she said, and then I had my rebuttal, and when I saw the final show, her words were in there. It was in there. But mine weren't in there, so it just looked like I kind of took it. This is all crazy, but I want to know what you guys think of all this. Do you think Oprah is the monster she's being allegedly called out to be? And who else do you think Oprah might have messed up along the way? Drop your thoughts in the comments and we'll catch you in the next video.